This is Common Core State Standard Support video for mathematics, standard 5, NF, 4A. This standard reads, apply and extend previous understandings of multiplication to multiply a fraction or a whole number by a fraction. Part A. Interpret the product A over B times Q as A parts of a partition of Q into B equal parts, equivalently as a result of operations A times Q divided by B. Now this isn't a very long standard compared to some others, but there's a whole lot to it. First of all, it's about fractions. There's a whole lot of variables in here. And the reality is there's a lot more under the surface to this than you would think at first. So let's take the first part, this whole idea of this product A over B times Q being A parts of a partition of Q into B equal parts. Again, it's a little bit confusing because of the variables. So let's start off with our quantity of Q and let's take the easiest possible scenario. Let's let Q be one. And so now we want to take our one and partition it into B equal parts. And let's let the B uh, be four. So we cut it up into four equal parts. And now we have some quantity A of those equal parts and let's let A be 3. So basically, what we have here from our A over B times Q is, again, we started off with 1, we split it up into 4 parts, and we wanted 3 of them, so we end up with 3 fourths times 1, which a lot of times we think of as 3 fourths of 1 in plain English. And again, this is a simple scenario because the whole was 1. Now let's try a different scenario. What if the Q itself was a proper fraction? In other words, Q is a fraction between 0 and 1. So let's take this example. We want 2 fifths times 2 thirds, or in plain English, 2 fifths of 2 thirds. So we first need to partition the 2 thirds into 5 equal parts. Again, the 2 thirds is the Q, and 5 is the B. So let's look at this visually so it can make a little bit more sense. So we're starting off with two-thirds, which is this here, but we need to split that up into five equal parts. So let's do that. Okay, so there's uh, one-fifth, two-fifths, three-fifths, four-fifths, which also takes care of the uh, fifth-fifth. Now our task is, well, we need two out of those parts. So what we need to do then, okay, well, here's one of those parts, here's a second of those parts, the third, and so forth, but we just need two of those. So here they are. So this is one, one part, and this is another part. Now how do we determine the solution? Well in a scenario like this, we can actually just get the answer by counting. Uh, notice that uh, we extended these blue lines all the way over to make a little bit more sense out of it, and we can tell now that we have one, two, three this way, one, two, three, four, five this way. So we have a total of 15 parts that we cut it into. And we only want one, two, three, four of these smaller rectangles, four parts. So our solution is four fifteenths. Now it might be difficult for students to do uh, all those subdivisions, especially trying to get them into equal parts and everything. So here's something that you can do to make it a lot simpler. You can make some fraction manip manipulatives you know, to find the solutions. So take some, uh, some clear plastic, some clear sheets, and what you want to do is make congruent squares, and that's important. In other words, all your squares need to be the same size. So then, of course, you need to have one for one half. You need another set for your third, so you'd have your one third and your two thirds. You have a set for your fourths, so you'd have your one fourth, two fourths, and three fourths. And of course, you'd continue on and make the rest you know, for your fifths, for your sixths, your sevenths, and so forth, probably up to about the, the tenths. So let's see how this works. Let's say we wanted two thirds times three fourths. So this means that our Q is three fourths, so we're starting off with three fourths. Then we find our other manipulative that's two thirds. So now what we need to do is take the two-thirds and rotate it around to where this one is horizontal compared to the original, the other one being vertical. Then what we need to do is just slide it over 
and just put one over the other. So notice the result now is this situation. And so our solution is going to be where the shaded areas overlap. And notice again, here was our three-fourths, but we only want two-thirds of that, which is indicated you know, this way. So two-thirds of three-fourths would be, would be right here. And again, how do we get our solution? Well, again, we can do it just by counting. We had, let's see, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, that's 12. So we have 12 total parts. And our solution, the common shaded area is one, two, three, four, five, six. So our solution is six over 12. Now, one thing that's important to notice here, note that in this process, when we put one manipulative over the other, we now just have one square manipulative. So notice that now we just have one as our whole. We really have six twelfths of one. And again, that was a, one of the main reasons, uh, really the critical reason, to make sure that your manipulatives, these uh, sheets with the shaded areas, are congruent squares, are the same size squares, so that when you rotate one, it'll fit exactly over the other. And when you do that, when one's over the other, again, your whole is now one because you just have one square. Now, if the students keep doing these types of problems over and over, they're going to start seeing a pattern. They're going to start seeing the pattern that, well, like for this one, well, look, it looks like we multiplied the twos to get the four, and in the denominator, it looks like we multiplied the 5 and the 3 to get the 15. Because the same thing worked here on this other example. 2 times 3 is 6. And on the bottom, on the denominator, 3 times 4 is 12. So then they're going to see, in general, that they multiplied the numerators and they multiplied the denominators to get their solution, which, of course, is your standard algorithm for multiplying two fractions. So they'll have that down you know, by using these manipulatives and figuring it out on their own. Now, there's one scenario that we haven't covered yet. What happens if your Q is something bigger than 1? We've covered 1, we've covered uh, the situation where Q was a fraction, but we haven't covered this one yet. If Q is something bigger than 1, it might be easier to think of Q as a set instead of a whole. It's, it's easier to think of a set of three instead of a whole of three, but they are synonymous though. Uh, your, your set here is your whole, so three is the whole. We began with this quantity Q, which was three, and let's say we need to cut that uh, quantity of three up into 12 parts, that's our B. So we've done that here. We, but notice that we had to do it by cutting up each individual circle into four parts to get 12 for the total. And now we need some quantity A of those equal parts, and let's let that be 5. So here's our situation. So we had uh, Q was 3, we cut that up into 12 parts, and we wanted 5 of them. So we have 5 twelfths times 3, and we've already uh, figured out the standard algorithm. Uh, so we convert that 3 to 3 over 1 to make it uh, fit. And so we multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators, and we get 15 over 12. There's a little bit of a problem here. I don't see 15 anywhere. But if we simplify the 15 over 12 to 5 over 4, okay, I can see that. You know, I see you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 fourths over here. Now let's check out what happened. We started off with 5 twelfths times 3, 5 twelfths of 3, and the whole was our set of 3. But then... We multiplied it, we got 15 over 12, which was equivalent to 5 over 4. Well, here's the understanding, here's the heart of the matter, the heart and soul of this. This idea of anything can be expressed as something times 1. Now the situation has changed to where when we're dealing with our product, our solution, the whole is 1. It's not 3 anymore. So let's review this one more time. We started off with 5 twelfths times 3, and our whole was a set of 3. Then when we got our solution, 5 fourths, that's really 5 fourths times 1. So that changed to where our whole for that is 1, which would look something like this. But... Looking at it this way, our answer of 5 over 4 makes sense because, again, here's four of them, there's one more, so there's five fourths. 
So again, what happened was the hole for the resulting product is one, not what you started off with. So if we look at the examples that we've done, uh, two-thirds times three-fourths being six-twelfths and five-twelfths times three being fifteen-twelfths. But again, we ended up with a whole of one. So in essence, multiplication that involves a fraction results in changing the original expression or context to one where the resulting product will be an expression where the whole is one. In other words, let's say you, uh, you had two-thirds of three-fourths of a gallon. A student could say, well, that's how much you have. You have two-thirds of three-fourths of a gallon. But that doesn't make sense. At least you know, it's hard to see that. But if we convert it, when we do the multiplication, now it makes it to where I can visualize it with one gallon as a whole. So I'd have six-twelfths of a gallon, which, of course, is half of a gallon. So that's what happens. You're converting this expression to something with respect to one being the whole. Now let's look at another scenario where our Q is something bigger than one. Uh, let's let uh, Q be a four. And let's say we wanted two-thirds of that. So we have two-thirds times four, which of course we know is eight-thirds knowing our standard algorithm. But there's a lot more to this. So let's look at our standard and follow what it says. So we have to begin with a quantity of four, and we need to partition that four into three equal parts. Now we have a little bit of a problem. It's very difficult to look at this and say, well, there's four rectangles here, but where in the world do I draw my lines or, or whatever to split this up into three equal parts? It's, I don't see it. Well, there's three equal parts. Well, what would happen if we take each of those and cut them up into three equal parts? Uh, maybe now there's something we can deal with here. So now I've got 12 of those smaller parts, and I want to split them up three ways. And of course, 12 divided by 3 is 4. Ah, so now I can see that what I can do then is section this off in chunks of 4. All right. So... That's where I would draw my lines to split it up into three parts. And if we were to do some shading, this is what it would look like, where here's the first of the three parts, there's the second of the three parts, and here's the third of the three parts. And then, of course, now with, this <clears throat> with the shaded drawing, I can figure out my solution. I have a whole one here, another whole one there, and two-thirds of another here, because this is where I had to stop, right here. Uh, so I've got 2 and 2 thirds, or 8 over 3, like we figured out earlier with the standard algorithm. But we still have this problem of what happens when we have a set and it's very difficult to split it up into the parts that they're asking for. Well, let's try this. What would happen if we take the, what the uh, standard says but use a commutative property and reverse it? Look at it in terms of Q times A over B. So we take the example that we were just working with, the 2 thirds times 4, let's reverse it. Let's make it 4 times 2 thirds. Now keep in mind that for the 2 thirds, the whole is 1. It's just a regular 2 thirds like we're used to thinking of it. So this will be 1 2 thirds. But in this scenario, we've got 4 of them. So there's our 4. So we have 4 2 thirds. And to get the solution, really all we have to do is just do a little bit of a imaginative moving and just uh, slide this over here, take my purple parts and move them over here, my salmon colored, move them over here, and then my last two thirds and move it over here, and voila, I can get my solution. I've got a whole one here, a whole one there, and two thirds of another, so I've got two and two thirds, or eight thirds. And notice that I don't need this one anymore, so I'll just X that out. What about the other example that we did, uh, the 5 twelfths times three with the circles? Uh, what happens when we reverse that and think of it as 3 5 twelfths? Well, here's what it would look like visually. I got uh, one 5 twelfths here, another 5 twelfths here, and another 5 twelfths over here. And just like we did with the rectangles, it just takes a little bit of imaginative moving. And so we take uh, this 5 twelfths and move it here. Take the blue shaded 5 twelfths and move them over here. And it's a little tougher with this last 5 twelfths, but it's okay. We take it and 
we move uh, two of them here and the other three there. And so there we have it. We have a whole one here and three twelfths of another one. And we get our one and three twelfths, which would be one, two, three, there's twelve and three more. That's fifteen twelfths. And again, we don't need this one anymore. Okay, we can't neglect this last part of the standard. The equivalently as a result of operations A times Q divided by B. So A over B times Q. Now what happens here as a result of operations A times Q all over B. Notice that we just made this into a fraction bar instead of the division sign to make it uh, equivalent to what we're dealing with as far as the representation. So what happens here? What's the difference? Well, let's take that example we just worked with, the one with the circles. Uh, 5 twelfths times 3 uh, equals 5 times 3 all over 12. Okay, to go back and review, this is what happened. Okay, we start off with 3, and we have to split it up into 12 equal parts. Okay, so we've done that. And then we want uh, 5 of those parts. Uh, so here's 1, 2, 3, 4. So there's 5 of those parts out of that set of 3. And of course, this diagram applies to the left side of the equation. So now let's look at the right-hand side of the equation, the original equation. 5 times 3 all over 12. Now if we do the standard algorithm, uh, we get 15 over 12. Now that 15 over 12, you know, the numerator indicates how many of this bottom number that we have. So it indicates that we have 15 of these. The problem I'm having is that, where's the 15? I don't see it. Plus, unless otherwise indicated, the whole for any fraction A over B is 1. And I'm dealing with three circles here, not one. So there's, there's some confusion and a problem here. So this diagram doesn't fit here. It doesn't work. So let's go back and look at our standard and let's redo this side to fit what the standard says as far as the interpretation. So now this says that I've got a whole of one that must be partitioned into 12 parts. So we do that. We partitioned it. And now we need 15 of those parts. So, oh wait a minute, there's only 12 that I can get out of that. So I need another circle. And so there's three more. And so that gives us our total of 15. And connecting back to what we had originally, uh, again, we don't need this third circle because we don't have a set of three anymore. We have a set of one. So even though this was a short standard as far as the length, there was a lot to it. There was a lot under the surface, but hopefully this will clarify this. And we try to dig a little bit deeper and go way beyond just the computation because the students need that. Uh, because again, they need to really understand what's going on with the models for this standard.